Hello and welcome to Tim Connolly Drums. I decided to do another Tales from the Roads type of story. <laughs> I um, seem to be getting a lot of interest in my videos where I'm telling stories. So uh, this is the angle that I wanted to go and um, seems to be working for me. So I'm going to tell you guys a story about how uh, seedy underworld and the, of the drug world in the my experiences in the Toronto scene again and this is just one story there's <laughs> hundreds but this one particular story I was playing a gig and um, in Toronto and what had happened was we had played the band that I was in at the time this is Quite a few years ago probably 15 years ago the band that i was playing in at the time had played a bunch of really good gigs not necessarily high paying but the crowd was really good the venues were really nice we got treated well and we were on a roll of pretty decent gigs and at the time we were just establishing ourselves with our agent and we were establishing ourselves in the scene, but we were rising in the scene. So I was confident. I can remember having a conversation with the singer and the guitar player who led the band. I was confident that we're on the rise. Things are looking up. I think we're going to start getting better gigs. So then the agent gives us a gig in Toronto. Okay. It's a bar gig in Toronto. Okay. We show up. Well, this is the dive bar of dive bars. I remember the stage being small and filthy. I didn't even want to put my gear on the stage. The stage was such a mess. I can't remember the name of the venue, but even if I did, I'm not going to tell because I don't want to uh, <laughs> get sued by any of these venues for telling you the truth about how crappy some of these gigs are. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I ended up cleaning off the stage as best I could. It had drumstick. For those drummers out there that gig a lot, gig in clubs that have a lot of bands, there was sawdust this thick. I'm not kidding you. This thick sawdust from drumsticks and oil and uh, just, you know, beer spilt, oil, drinks spilt. They never cleaned up the carpet. They never vacuumed it. And the reason the sawdust was like this is because the sticks are shredding, but people are spilling stuff all over the stage. And of course, it's creating layers. That's how um, I mean when I say the sawdust was this thick. So I remember I cleaned the stage off in the area that I was as best that I could. Couldn't really do a heck of a lot, but I did it the best I could. As I recall, the band played well. We did our thing. I think on the second break of the night, I went into the bathroom and a lady, some lady out of the blue, follows me right into the bathroom. <laughs> the men's bathroom, I might add. And she kind of corners me in the bathroom. It's a small bathroom. She says, um, yeah, okay, I want um, crystal meth and I want heroin and I want this and I want that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She says, I'm putting my order in. This is what I want. And I'm like, what do you mean you're putting the, your order in? I did not understand what was going on. I found out later. Basically, according to this lady, she always buys drugs from the drummer. I always buy my drugs from the drummer. <laughs> well, I can't explain that in terms of what other drummers are doing. But for me... I don't do drugs. I've never done drugs. I've never sold drugs. I still don't sell drugs. And I, have, I don't know any drug dealers. I have nothing to do with any drugs, drug paraphernalia. I don't use or do or sell any of it. And that has to be really clear for you to understand this story. So obviously she doesn't know me. So I tell her this. I go, look, I don't do drugs. I don't sell, blah, blah, blah. She doesn't believe me. Look. Stop screwing around. You know, I know that you have this, this, and this. And I'm like, I don't have any of that. 
and I go, look, lady, you're in the men's freaking washroom. Let me do my thing. You know, and she storms out. So I go to the bathroom, wash my hands. I'm shaking my head. I can't believe this. I leave. She corners me again in the hallway. She's outside waiting for me. She corners me in the hallway. Look, you better come up with this. I, you're supposed to do this for me. And I've already talked to so-and-so Henry or Charles or somebody. And I'm like, I don't know who the hell Henry is, or Charles. And I'm trying to tell her, I am not the guy. You're confusing me with somebody else. You're confusing the band. Maybe a band last week had a drummer and you thought he was going to be I, I, I'm here again this week or I look like him or something. So I'm trying to reason with her, but she's a junkie. You can't reason with junkies. She just wants her fix. So finally, again, I just go, look, lady, leave me the hell alone. I'm not a drug dealer. So I storm out of the hallway. And you got to remember, one thing about being a musician on the gig when you're dealing with ornery customers, so to speak, you can't leave. I can't leave till the gig's over. I can't go back to the guys and say, hey, guys, uh, there's a junkie on my case, and um, I don't have any drugs to give them, so I can't get them off my back. So we got to pack up and leave. We, I can't leave. I'm stuck. So anyways, she, she kind of leaves me alone for a little while. And then I'm on stage, I'm playing, and the lights kind of dim a little bit. And I'm, I'm in the middle of playing a song. I look over, and I see her, and she's on a phone. And she's staring at me the whole time. She's talking on the phone, and I'm thinking, oh, shit. She's talking to people to come down to roll my ass at the end of the night to take my money, my gear, beat me up, steal what they think drugs that I may have on me because they think I'm lying. So now I'm in a tough situation because I'm starting to panic a little bit because I think that things are going to go bad. And I'm thinking, oh shit, I got to get out of here. I got to pack my shit up and leave. So anyways, song ends. I quickly call the singer over and I tell her the situation. And I tell the, the, the guitar player leans in and I tell them the situation and they're, and they're trying to calm me down, you know just calm down, everything's going to be fine, and, you know, nothing's going to happen, whatever. So, okay, keep playing. She's glaring at me the whole time, and she's looking at her watch, and I know she's got people coming. <laughs> so to say that it was a nervous gig, is to say the least, because I'm thinking, I'm doomed. I'm doomed. I'm going to get rolled at the end of the night. So anyways, we finish. Second we finish, I tear down the fastest I could possibly tear down. And normally what happens is you got to wait around to get your money. <laughs> now, luckily, the guitar player was hip to the scene. When we were tearing down, he could tell I was in panic mode. He went and got the money. Usually you got to wait till the very end of the night in terms of um, tear down and the crowd's gone and all that. Then you go see you know, the manager and the manager usually pays you. Sometimes a waitress pays you, but it's usually the manager. You go into his office. He talks to you about the gig. He talks to you about the night, whatever. Anyways, the guitar player goes and gets this money quickly. So thank God for him. Um, I still managed to get paid and didn't have to wait. So as I'm packing up and then loading up, as I'm outside, I see this car roll up with these two guys. Oh, man. And I'm thinking, these guys look pretty shady. They don't look like fine, law-abiding citizens. And I'm like, oh, shit. Here we go. So I go back into the club. <clears throat> I lock my vehicle with what I had put in there, and I go back into the club, and I tell the guys in my van, I go, look, I don't know if they're here for me, but these two really shady looking guys just pulled up right near my vehicle. They're on their way in here now. I have a feeling they're linked to this woman. Well, I was right. They come in, they see her, they go right over to her. She's pointing at the band, of course, pointing at me. And I'm like, oh shit. So, I just decide, well, there's safety in numbers. I'm going to stick with the band. So, 
we continue doing our tear down on stage, stick with the band, and I'm trying to pretend like nothing is happening. Meanwhile, shitting bricks inside because I'm thinking these guys got guns, they got knives, whatever. So they come up to me and they say, are, you know, are you the drummer, blah, blah, blah. And then they say, what's your name? Tell them my first name. Is your name Jake? No. You sure? Yes. <laughs> I actually pull out my driver's license, cover up my address and say, look, here I am. I covered up my last name and my address. And I just said, look, I'm only going to give you this information. I'm not Jake. And I tell them the situation. And then they say, okay. And they go back to her and she's screaming at them. They're arguing. I just continue to do my thing. I tear down my stuff, get it into that vehicle as fast as possible. They, those guys never came back up to me. They never bothered me again. They actually left with her kicking and screaming. Again, none of my business. She was yelling, angry. They literally dragged her out of the place, threw her in the vehicle, and they left. And I was so relieved. I just packed the rest of my stuff up, and I left. And I'm just, like, shitting my pants, thinking, why do we put ourselves through this as musicians? We're vulnerable. Like I said, you can't leave the gig. I had to wait till the very end. I finished that show. But I was so pissed off. It was the end of my time with that band because I got on the phone with, the um, guitar player and the singer, and I just said, look, we did a bunch of good gigs, got paid decently, and I thought we were moving up, and then we get the shithole of shithole dive bar gig, and it's like the agent doesn't seem to care. He's not booking us. If we're on the move up, we should be getting decent venues, and then he gives us this. So I did something which I actually regret now. I said, I, let's protest the agent. The next time he gives us a gig, we protest it. They didn't like my idea. <clears throat> Anyways, a few days go by. I get a call from the singer or the guitar player. can't remember who. might have been the singer. And they say, yeah, we got a gig at such and such. And I held to my guns, oh, you should protest it. <clears throat> and... Um, She's like, oh, no, no, we got to do this gig. We can't turn it down. We're on the rise. We don't want to piss the agent off. At that time, many, many years ago, I had no experience dealing with agents. I realized moving forward after running my own band for seven years and dealing with agents that she was 100% correct. You piss the agent off once and your bookings die quick. And they all know each other. So you think you can just go out, ah, forget about him. I'll go get a different agent. No. They all talk to one another in the Toronto scene. So you're screwed if you screw one agent, unless he's the only agent, because there was one or two at the time that were on the outside. They were trying to break their way in. So <clears throat> if you went and hooked up with them, well, the good agents wouldn't want anything to do with you. So, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat's bugging me here. <clears throat> Anyways. I regret doing what I did because what ended up happening was they hired um, a different drummer, a, a fairly big name drummer in the Toronto scene. Actually, I'm not going to name his name or anything, but a fairly big name drummer subbed in for me. And the gig didn't go well because he was drunk on the gig. He did not play well. He struggled playing with the click live. The gig did not go well. The band did not play well. It was a bad night. And of course, word got back to the agent. It damaged the band. And I quit. That situation really traumatized me. And um, I quit the band. But I regret doing that because the band was so great. The guys in the band were so great. And if any of you from, you'll know. You guys will know who I'm talking about. If you are watching this and you were a member with me in that band. I miss you guys. You guys were awesome. I was wrong. I made a mistake. I was upset about that whole druggy thing. I was upset about the agent um, giving us a crappy venue because the next gig could have been right back to good gigs again. I, I think I made a mistake and I regret. I've made that mistake a couple of times, quitting bands harshly. And um, 
even though I have made amends with the singer, I've never made amends with the bass player or the guitar player, which is sad because I, I have a lot of respect for both of them. But I did make amends with the singer and we continued to become friends and um, occasionally we chat. We never did play together again to this day. Um, but that's my <laughs> drug related. The drummer always supplies me my drug story. <laughs> Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment. If you're a musician, I'd be interested in hearing your crazy stories in the comments as well. Thanks for watching, and as always, keep drumming. See ya.